Hello and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I welcome you to today's webinar. Uh, we'll wait some more minute just to make sure that everybody can start uh, from the beginning uh, of the presentation. So, uh, am I audible to everybody? If if some of you can write on the chat and let me know. Okay, yeah, yeah. That's fine. Thank you. So, uh, so far, uh, we have 20 participants. Let's let's wait for some time and see if we get a bit more. And then we can start on today's webinar. So, uh, thank you all for joining us today. So I'll, I'll, I think I'll start with the uh, introduction of uh, today's speaker. So today we are going to have a webinar on tympanometry. We're trying to go on the basics of audiology to start with and in coming weeks, if, if the lockdown continues, we will go, uh, go ahead and have some more uh, higher level topics like uh, maybe electrophysiology or other topics at such. And even in speech side, we are trying to get speech and language topics. Hopefully in next week, we'll have some more topics. Uh, we are still working towards that. Uh, as, as and when we, we can confirm it, we'll let you know. So uh, today's topic is tympanometry and we are trying to do basics of tympanometry with clinical application. And hopefully this topic will be applicable to everybody so that you know as soon as the lockdown is over, we, we can, uh, utilize what we have learned today. So uh, today's speaker is Anud Gimire. Uh, he's been working as a, a research and clinical audiologist at Green Pastor Hospital, Pokhara. Uh, he's completed his postgraduate studies from All India Institute of, of Speech and Hearing, where he did his undergrad studies as well. There's a number of publications to his name, and um, I hope we'll have a wonderful session today and I'll pass it on to Anup now. So over to you. Hello, uh, good evening everyone. It's me Anup Gimere. Thank you for beautiful introduction uh, Vivek sir. So hope you all are fine and staying inside your home. So I feel like uh, tympanometry is the most fascinating and very fast uh, fast to do perform test uh, in audiology. So as we all know, the uh, we have gone through the pneumatic otoscope where we have seen like we are observing the tympanic membrane moment with the applied pressure through the pneumatic otoscope. It is uh, unlike that, but uh, unlike that tympanometry, we are using the various pressure, pressure, but we are not trying to observe the moment of the tympanic membrane. So in this process, what we are observing is like with the varying pressure, how much, uh, how much energy is passing through our, this, our middle ear system and how much energy is reflecting back through the middle ear system. So in this process, if we go back to the history, Bekesi was the first person to use this system to evaluate the cochlear sensitivity by changing the uh, ear pressure but he uh, he did uh, he didn't try to uh, see the more from the view of middle ear pathology uh, with the after 20 year from this bekesi around 1930 he did this uh, research after 20 year automeds was the first to study to differentiate uh, differentiate middle ear disease by using the sound breeze and uh, it's uh, it's a tympanic like a emittance audiometry so 
so in today's topic i'll be hello yeah continue we can listen we can hear you my screen is not changing oh, okay sorry for that one second one second sorry for that in the meantime so I'll... yeah yes okay yeah. Uh, now i'm mm -hmm. back yeah okay. so uh, today i'll be trying to discuss more about the basics means basics and the instrumentation tympanogram static complaints physical volume multi frequency and the multi component acoustic reflex um, i'll be highlighting on these topics more so emittance is the general term used to describe how well energy flows through a system so uh, we know that it hardly takes more than 5 minutes to perform the emittance so it can be used uh, used in the children also it is uh, it is non behavioral test it can be used in the babies very small babies also so it tells about the different middle ear status and it also evaluates the reflex pathways and uh, it can give the all the information from the our cochlea cochlear nucleus then uh, auditory nerve then superior olivary complex and the to the efferent pathways uh, facial nerve and back to the stapedius uh, muscles it gives the all the information and it cross checks the pta finding and uh, this helps especially on the pseudo hypocrisis so those who are malingering in that cases if you use this reflex then we will get to uh, get an idea about either that person is malingering or not so this uh, helps in the cross checking cross checking the pta finding so middle ear uh, we know like external ear we can easily uh, easily view with the otoscope but uh, middle ear from nowhere from uh, from the sturgeon tube also from the external auditory canal also we cannot view so tympanometry helps us to examine this closed middle ear space from the outer ear canal so uh, uh, before understanding the tympanometry and the concept, we have to uh, know about these things. Uh, ear pressure must be same, like in order to pass the, all the energy from the external ear to the middle ear and to the inner ear, the pressure from the external ear and the middle ear, it should be same from the both the side. So in this time, this create the least steep and the most, com uh, most compliance, that means energy will be sound energy will be easily passing to the middle ear so uh, before understanding the uh, different aspect of the impedance we have to understand this uh, physics bit of physics if uh, if we have the three system in our system mass stiffness and resistance the blockage of energy blockage of energy due to mass we call as a mass reactance and the uh, blockage due to stiffness or the spring system then we call it as a stiffness reactance and the due to the rough surface uh, we call called as a resistance or our resistance is mainly due to the uh, heat, heat loss and uh, so impedance if you see the uh, impedance impedance uh, emittance it has two uh, two concept one is the impedance and the another is a admittance impedance basically it uh, it is defined as a opposition to flow of energy in a system so if we are observing the how much sound is opposing if we apply the pressure then uh, if we are studying that then it is the impedance measurement whereas admittance is like how how much energy is passing through the system uh, with the varying pressure then that uh, that study is called admittance so impedance and admittance there are the few uh, few factor which i just discussed here mass stiffness and the resistance for the impedance so mass mass res, uh, mass reactance 
mass reactance is the opposite due to the mass in the system and the stiffness reactance is opposition due to the stiffness in a system stiffness and the uh, resistance due to the friction so similarly all the component will be opposite for the admittance so in our system if you see the uh, see in the middle layer so mass is contributed mainly by the middle layer ossicles and the stiffness due to uh, load of fluid uh, pressure from the inner ear on the stiffest foot plate and the resistance is ligament of the middle ear ossicles so what we have to understand is our middle ear bones are very tiny and very low in mass so it doesn't contribute more in our impedance or emittance evaluation whereas stiffness the uh, uh, middle ear we have already studied like middle ear transformer actions that means like our inner ear fluid is blocking the our uh, blocking or the stopping the uh, moment of the middle ear so it has high stiffness and it has very low mass and resistance is very negligible so in normal adult middle ear middle ear is more mainly stiffness dominated system so we have to keep this in mind and we'll come back to this point again so uh, what we use in regularly like admittance or the impedance we should know that admittance uses admittance uses automatic automatic gain control which means like if you are pressing uh, uh, as if you are uh, giving probe tone in the uh, external ear it assesses the spl in the it measures the spl in the ear canal and it balances that whereas impedance meter it doesn't uh, uh, it depends on the spl on the ear canal so if you plot the tympanogram by using impedance impedance meter the uh, due to the various uh, various canal sizes spl will be various uh, varying so the uh, tympanogram will be different i think uh, if i want to simplify that if uh, if we want to measure through impedance uh, impedance meter instead of admittance spl sizes spl uh, due to varying in spl with the different canal sizes uh, the tympanogram uh, shape will be varied so it doesn't uh, have a uniformity uh, but whereas admittance uses agc uh, agc automatic gain control which is not uh, based on the different canal sizes so if we measure impedance or the uh, if we measure the tympanogram with the admittance uh, it doesn't affect it is not affected by the ear canal size so i think this makes clear like most of the newer devices are based on the admittance not from the not in the impedance and another aspect is like admittance if you want to calculate the admittance here i think uh, i'll show with the pointer so if you want to uh, measure admittance calculation of admittance in the middle ear is very easy and whereas the calculation of uh, impedance in the middle ear uh, through uh, impedance is very difficult so how it works how we can measure these things so first thing what we have to understand is uh, we have three tiny holes for the three different thing first thing what we have to uh, make in our mind is we need to have one probe tone which is around 226 hertz most of the time 226 hertz which will constantly give 226 hertz probe tone with 85 decibel sound and um, uh, next thing is what we are measuring is how much sound is bouncing back back from the tympanic membrane and that bouncing back sound pressure level we are measuring through the microphone or recorder and which we are will be analyzing through our system and the third thing is air pump air pump constantly give the air pressures from the positive air pressure to the room air pressure to the negative air pressures through the to the ear canal so if you give the positive pressure it will make stiff system stiff to the tympanic membrane and most of the energy will be reflecting back if it is a room temperature uh, room pressure almost maximum energy will be going or passing through the system 
so uh, if we want if we want to see our probe uh, probe tip will be having three holes and one more extra hole will be there for the uh, ipsilateral reflex testing we will be discussing it later so uh, these things i already have told about this probe monitor microphone to record the sound, uh, reflected sound or bounce back sound then pressure prompt to give the various pressure and probe tone loudspeaker which give the constant 226 hertz at 85 dB uh, SPL. So uh, next thing is like it is in detail how it works. I think uh, this also not required much like microphone what we, uh, like first we are giving the probe tone speaker which is probe tone is generated by the oscillator then amplifier then it gives to the uh, probe tip and the second is the air pump or uh, pressure transducer which gives the various pressure and then third system is uh, to give the ipsilateral uh, ipsi speaker which means like if you want to uh, measure the ipsilateral reflexes uh, so we should have the one more speaker for that for, for providing the stimulus for the reflexes and whatever bounces uh, bounce back from the ear canal we have to measure uh, by using the microphone and which is analyzed uh, analyzed by the processor so we uh, we we, are, we know that we are using almost all the time 226 hertz tone why not 250 and why not 500 600 700 so for this uh, to answer that Calibration uh, calibrated like 226 hertz tone are used to calibrate the admittance. Uh, so thus, what is this uh, mean by is uh, uh, when this meter indicate the admittance of uh, ear is 1.8 mm HOS at 226 hertz. Uh, admittance of the corresponding that ear canal volume is ear uh, that volume of ear is 1.8. What is this is like? Uh, when uh, when meter indicate that the admittance of the ear is 1.8 mm HOS millimoles at 226 hours, this means that the ear in that canal is uh, 1.8 ml of volume. So uh, we have seen that our uh, calibration tube were uh, 1 cc, 2 cc, 3 cc. If we are using in the 1 cc, that means uh, admittance value of uh, 1 1 equals to 1 mm uh, 1 ml of air volume so i think this makes clear why we are using 226 hertz but uh, 226 hertz our most of the one more reason is like our system is most of the time uh, stiffness dominate, dominated system so if you are using the low frequency 226 hertz tone it gives the better idea about our middle ear system but in in case of children if we are using 226 hertz then it won't give the clear idea as we know the children's uh, ossicles and the uh, external ear uh, that bony canal it is not completely ossified so uh, in children it is mostly mass dominated system so because of that if you use the 226 hertz it won't give the clear picture about their middle ear status whereas if you instead of using the low frequency if you use the high frequency probe tone then it gives the clear idea even if you are using uh, 226 hertz tone for the ossicular chain dysfunction or the uh, autosclerosis uh, instead of the, using this if you use the higher uh, higher frequency probe tone that might give the better idea about uh, a better idea about the condition or the disease so we'll be again discussing to that point so 85 dB, why, are, why we are not using 95, 90 dB SPL, 100 dB SPL? The answer is that while measuring the tympanometry, if you use the higher high SPL than 85 or 90, it, uh, obviously 85 or 90, it, it might activate the our stapedius muscles. So uh, they have found like 85 or the 70, some of the researches I have found like 70 dB also they have used so if you use the higher high spl it will reduce that compliance value will be reducing 
so he is the uh, automates testing the patient with the breeds so uh, if we want to measure the tympanometry there are mainly four important test which we have to measure one is the tympanogram second is a static compliance then physical volume of the ear canal and the acoustic reflexes so tympanogram we all uh, we all know tympanogram so in tympanogram it is a graph uh, graph plotted against pre, uh, pressure and compliance value pressure we are giving from the 300 uh, plus 200 to minus 400 and uh, we have to what we have to imagine here is this maximum peak what it indicates is like when we have 200 when pressure is 200 it is uh, it is making the pressure is making our ear uh, ear drum or the tympanic membrane maximum stiff and uh, because of maximum stiff it act as a hollow cavity means uh, uh, one cavity which is reflecting all the sound that means it has a lowest complaints that means it has a lowest admittance uh, which means it is not allowing energy to pass to the middle ear system hello yes oh, that's okay you continue here yeah. Uh, uh when uh, when we are reducing from the 200 to the room temp uh, room pressure that is around 0 dapa or 0 mms to so in that 0 or the room room pressure the energy flow through uh, flow flow through the middle ear is maximum we can see in the a uh, the maximum complaints that this means that energy is almost maximally it is going through the system and it is minimally reflecting it is not reflecting or the bouncing back the spl to the microphone which from which we are going to measure and if you go to the negative pressure if you go to the if you increase or the, if you decrease the pressure toward the negative direction or if you are pulling back the pressure from the ex, our external auditory canal what it does is again it makes the our tympanic membrane maximum stiff and all it reflected all the energy to our microphone so uh, this gives the clear idea about how well energy is passing through the system one more important point what we have to think is like it is very amazing to know that uh, with the external ear we are getting to know about the pressure in the middle ear so uh, pressure in the middle ear how we are finding the pressure in the middle ear is like when uh, when you have maximum stiff tympanic membrane that time it will maximally reflect the uh, maximally reflect the energies to the microphone which is in external ear so that gives the uh, clear idea about the external ear admittance or the admittance of the contribution from the external ear and if we reduce with the max, uh, maximum energy which is passing while it is at the uh, room pressure so if we uh, just subtract uh, subtract with the uh, this value it gives about the middle ear stat how well middle ear is functioning so with the tympanogram with the different shape of the tympanogram gives the different uh, different idea about uh, middle ear conditions type a normally it, uh, it indicates in the normal and type ad is like hyper uh, hypermobile tympanic membrane which is ostibular discontinuity if someone have ostibular discontinuity and as is a like if autosclerosis is there which is uh, which is blocking which our energy is not passing or easily it is not going through the system which you can see here i told like uh, this maximum point indicate it is how well energy is passing inside so here in a type it is more energy is going when as or the due to ostibular fixation or the mass in the foot plate of the step is the energy passing is lowest so we can easily correlate whereas in the discontinuity that uh, energy is uh, that our ostcles are moving fastly so ad type of tympanogram will get in the ostcular chain discontinuity so if we see the b type of tympanogram so otitis media it gives about the otitis media 
occluded cerumen perforation so how it gave out the ot otitis media is we can see here i want to highlight to this point so if uh, someone have normal so at room pressure we can get the maximum compliance value or the maximum at uh, compliance we can get at the room pressure when uh, when slightly tympanic membrane is retracted it will go toward the negative and uh, sequentially if uh, retraction is more it will go toward the very deep negative pressure so initial then uh, next step in the fluid is like if moderate fluid is started accumulating at that point so it will uh, start becoming round from the peak so again if fluid is more then we can see the progression so from this point what i want to highlight is like with this tympanogram we can see the we can uh, get an idea about the how disease is progressing and uh, even we can see the uh, how after the treatment how well uh, how well is the uh, system working with the medication we can get to know about that idea from uh, tympanometry also and another is like uh, otitis media if they have otitis media or the fluid then maximum energy as i told maximum b type it, it indicates maximum energy is bouncing back and we are getting through the microphone uh, and energies are not energy are not passing through the middle ear completely so uh, occluded cerumen if someone have wax uh, impacted wax also we can get the uh, b type of tympanogram and perforation or the uh, patent pat, uh, patulous stretching tube what we have is like if uh, b type with the ear canal higher ear canal volume higher ear canal volume that uh, that we can tell that it is perforated if it is uh, very high around 6 7 then we can tell that stretching tube is all uh, open all the time which is patulous stretching tube and if someone have otosclerosis advanced otosclerosis cholestatoma and head trauma also might get b type of tympanogram and type c uh, type c already while discussing in this figure i have told like type c is like when we have uh, pressure me, equal yes yes yeah we'll we'll uh, leave the meeting for now and i will request everybody to click on the same link and we'll continue again okay okay yes please click on the same link and we'll continue in a minute thank you